we examine one of the most enduring mysteries in Canadian history. We retrace the footsteps of Sir John Franklin's doomed crew. And along the way, we encounter some of the perils they faced. It's a big storm here right now. We also uncover some new artifacts and discover that little is being done to preserve a key moment in our history. This is a grave of human remains. This is CBC News Sunday Night. Up on CBC News Sunday Night, Evan retraces the final steps of the doomed Franklin expedition. A human skull. Yeah. And no one's ever analyzed it. No. Are the clues to solving an enduring Canadian mystery somewhere out there? We have to take care of ourselves and assume no one's going to come and rescue us. We retrace the steps of the ill-fated Franklin expedition and uncover new evidence in the Arctic. What is under there? It's a skeleton. That's coming up on CBC News Sunday night. Like the Franklin men experienced, the harsh Arctic is starting to take a toll on us. <laughs> One fellow on our team can't feel the lower part of his leg. <clears throat> it's really, it's becoming a tough go. Welcome back to CBC News Sunday Night. The politics surrounding the Arctic have been heating up lately. Prime Minister Stephen Harper has announced that Canada will build two military facilities in the far north to assert our sovereignty. His motto, use it or lose it. But just what does that really mean when Canada leaves its oldest Arctic mystery unsolved? I went on a long trek to retrace the steps of the doomed Franklin expedition, and our investigation turned up some intriguing discoveries. Here's our documentary, Death in the Arctic, reopening Canada's coldest case. As the wind whips around us on the Northwest Passage, it's hard not to hear the voices of the dead men in it. Ghosts still calling out on the tundra. And how you know, kind of straight it is. This could be part of a human skeleton. Almost 160 years after they disappeared into this unforgiving Arctic land, the mystery of what really happened to Captain John Franklin and his 128 men remains unsolved. There's lots of oral history of people finding skeletons here. Why did they all die? And why have so few remains ever been found? Has anyone ever exhumed this body? Nobody has ever dug into this um, grave, olive grave. This is a grave of human remains, and no one's ever no one's exhumed it. The answer may lie with Louis Kamakuk, who spent his entire life searching for clues, trying to crack the world's most famous cold case. The mystery begins in 1845. The Royal Navy outfits Captain John Franklin with a crew of 134 men and two ships. Their goal is to discover the fabled Northwest Passage, a route through the Canadian North for ships to sail to the lucrative trade with China. But three years later, the boats are beset in the ice. Franklin himself dies on board, and just four months later, the desperate crew abandons the ships. They drag supplies across the ice to a place called King William Island. And there they try to march their way back to the Canadian mainland to survive. But none of them are ever seen alive again by Europeans. The only evidence that's ever been found from the Franklin crew are less than 40 skeletons, some lifeboats, food tins, and most controversially, signs of cannibalism. Our goal is to travel to King William Island and retrace part of what most people believe 
were the last steps of the lost men from the Franklin voyage. And they found uh, evidence of a lot of people dying there. Um, and unfortunately, they found a lot of evidence that they're thinking of this as cannibalism. And along the way, we hope to find some new evidence from that tragedy. We arrive in the small Inuit hamlet of Joe Haven. Joining me on this joint CBC Outpost magazine expedition are photographer Chris Christie, the writer Stephen Smith, our cameraman Rich Fatusi, and the explorer Kevin Vallely. On the back of a pickup truck, we get our first impression of modern life on the island where the Franklin men disappeared. And then we get on to meet the local expert on the Franklin expedition, Louis Kamakuk. Because I, I believe the ship was way out here on Franklin Dyke, but that summer it might have moved a bit here. Ever since his grandmother passed along stories about the Franklin crew to him as a nine-year-old boy, Louis has been obsessed with finding new evidence that might shed light on the mystery. And as he tells us, he's made some startling discoveries on a set of tiny islands in the middle of the Northwest Passage, three hours away. Our search for the Franklin men has begun. Like, like a wall. You found bones with like clothes yeah. attached. Yeah, to. like a wall. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think it was? It's probably with some um, part of Franklin's men's remains. Franklin's men's remains, yeah. right here. Yeah. Louis shows us five old grave sites, which coincide with accounts from Inuit oral history of members of the Franklin crew who were buried here. The sites have never before been located or examined. It's like a series of graves. They look like man-made stones. Yeah. It's not different, Inuit. They're definitely man-made. Man-made, what are they doing here? Who are they? But while the grave sites intrigue us, what Louis leads us to nearby is even more startling. This is a uh, hollow grave. There's some bones, human bones. Hip bone? Yep, there's the hip bone there. And some, maybe part of a leg bone. And this one here is uh, the shoulder, shoulder blade. Shoulder blade. And some spine, spine bones, like the spine. And this one here is uh, part of uh, the feet, like towards the heel. And how do you know this is not an old Inuit grave? Um, the Inuit would never, before that, bury their dead. They wrap them in the skin and put them on a higher ground. As we explore the island, it feels like we're in some Arctic episode of CSI. And then suddenly, I stumble across a new and grisly piece of evidence. So this is what's so fascinating about Todd Island. We're literally just walking along, not a couple hundred feet from the grave that we found. And again, this is an island where five skeletons from the Franklin expedition were found. Come across this bone, old, decay, but from our point of view, distinctly human. It looks like a jawbone. Louis now takes us to his most haunting discovery of all. The top part of a human skull. A human skull. Yeah. And no one's ever analyzed it. No. Without archaeological permits, and Louis doesn't have them either, we can do nothing but stare at the human bones in front of us. Understandably, the Nunavut government has stringent rules about excavation of relics, but the politics of bones shouldn't leave crucial historical finds like these literally 
out in the cold. I just so badly want to take it in a little bag and send it to a university for analysis. In fact, that's just what some scientists have done at other sites. Most famously in the 1980s, on an island just north of where we are now, the Canadian anthropologist Owen Beatty exhumed the perfectly preserved bodies of three Franklin crew members and discovered they had high levels of lead. He believes that badly soldered tin food on the ships gave the men lead poisoning and drove them mad, perhaps to their deaths. Other scientists have examined different bones that showed signs of cannibalism, knife cuts across the bone. But as Louis has revealed to us, there's clearly huge amounts of evidence left unexamined and inexplicably ignored. What is under there? It's a skeleton. Don't you wish you could dig? Yeah. And if the Todd Islands are a virtual boneyard, what about King William Island itself, where most of the Franklin crew are believed to have died? And that's where Louis Kamakook now drops us off to begin the rest of our expedition. When we come back, the land that broke the Franklin crew breaks one of our team members as well. We did the very thing that we shouldn't be doing, and we walked out into a storm. The rest of us run low on food. Do we have to resort to more traditional ways in order to survive? Please stay with us. Welcome back to CBC News Sunday and our documentary, Death in the Arctic. We're following the trail of the 129 men from the lost Franklin expedition of 1848. They were looking for the famed Northwest Passage when they had to abandon their frozen ships and come here to King William Island to try to save themselves. None of them were ever seen alive again by Europeans. Our local expert on the Franklin voyage, Louis Kamakuk, has led us to what he believes are remains of the Franklin crew, showing us bones, even a skull. But we've left Louis and are now trying to make it towards the frozen west coast of the island where more evidence of the crew has been found. But like the Franklin men experienced, the harsh Arctic is starting to take a toll on us. The wind's howling, the temperature's just dropping beneath zero, and we're seeing the rain turn to snow, and it's August the 5th. As one member of our team said, in a climate like this, those Franklin Expedition fellas never stood a chance. We did the very thing that we shouldn't be doing, and we walked out into a storm. Um, uh, it's, it's pouring rain. Uh, wind is like a gale force wind against us the entire way, going over very difficult terrain um, with packs that are absolutely outrageous in terms of their weights. Uh, I weigh about 150 pounds and my pack weighs probably 100 pounds. Uh, we're in a tough way. Uh, guys are already getting blisters. <laughs> One fellow on our team can't feel the lower part of his leg. <clears throat> it's really, it's becoming a tough go for it, uh, for us right now. We wait inside our tent for the storm to pass, and finally, a half day later, we get back on the trail. So post river crossing, Rich, how you feeling? Uh, I'm okay, except my feet are on fire. <laughs> Your feet aren't, seriously, how do they feel? They're on fire. I got a pinched nerve which is causing my, uh, my, my whole leg above my knee up to my, uh, my buttocks to go completely numb. It's clear now that Rich can't hike much further, but there's only one solution. We'll have to walk to an old unmanned military dew station where our contact back in Joe Haven says ATVs can come to pick him up and evacuate him home. The only problem is the dew station is almost 30 kilometers away. In 
inside the abandoned station, Rich collapses while the rest of us try to regroup. We got one man down, can't walk. So where does that leave us, boss? You don't put yourself into a position where you're depending on other people to get you out. This is not what we're trying to do out here. So from, a, from that vantage point, we have to take care of ourselves and assume no one's gonna come and rescue us. Finally, we make a tough decision. Four of us are going to push on ahead to the food drop, leaving Rich back at the dew station to be picked up. So right behind us, we've just spotted some Arctic musk ox, and we're very excited there. We're just by a watering hole. It's about 9 p.m. on our hike, and we're gonna to try to get as close as we can to get some footage. It's a really exciting wildlife uh, moment for us. A day after the emotional high of the muskox sighting, things again turn against us. It's a big storm here right now. Yeah, yeah, we just got walloped. Yeah, oh, really, yeah. What happened there? What did Charlie say? Uh, the storm rolled over the entire area. Everyone's been battered. Uh, Cambridge Bay, right through Joe. And he said it just led up about half an hour in Joe, uh, finally. And the guys are going to leave now. Oh, so they didn't even they, get out? They left yesterday and turned around and um, they found their machine wasn't big enough. So they turned around and went back. The food we were expecting to be dropped off on the trail ahead has not arrived and our own supplies are running perilously low. Meanwhile, Rich is still stuck alone back at the dew station. We have no choice but to head back to get him. Almost two days later, we arrive at the dew station at almost the exact same time as Rich's rescue team. There are two ATVs pulling sleds. The driver of one is a 50-year-old Inuit man named Paul Ikwalik. So uh, we missed each other. We walked <laughs> yeah. back because we thought you guys weren't coming. I thought you were up that way. As Paul tells us, there's no more food ahead and our only choice is to hike home. We're disappointed, but we all know the Franklin lesson. Push too hard up in the Arctic, and you don't just risk losing your mission, you risk losing your life. Instead, we do what Franklin never did. Learn how to survive in the Arctic from the Inuit, and we join Paul on a hunt for a caribou. Somehow the hunt has bonded us, and in the morning, we all share an Inuit delicacy. <laughs> Paul's cutting us some pieces of the raw caribou that he just killed, and it's actually pretty, pretty tasty. No, leave it on. This is what Franklin missed. This is what Franklin missed. He refused to hunt. Can you say, say, that, say that again? He refused to learn. All right, let's march. Over the last few days of hiking, we reflect on the ongoing mystery of the Franklin Expedition. Why so few people seem to care that human remains still lie unexamined on the tundra. It seems the only person fully dedicated to solving this mystery is Louis Kamakuk, who we meet up with once again on the shores of the Northwest Passage. I think in a way, um, 
the government should be putting more funding into the research of finding these mysteries. But they aren't. Louis has no funding from Canada to pursue his search. And so, for now, the oldest Canadian cold case remains unsolved. Just what does Arctic sovereignty really mean when the ghosts of the brave men from the lost Franklin crew are still crying out to be heard? Now, a couple of things. There are crews looking for the two Franklin ships, but there is a lot more forensic work to be done on those bones, clearly. Now, I, I want to thank the extraordinary Louis Kamakuk and all the good people of Joe Haven and the RCMP contingent up there who helped us so much. And so let me just forgive my mangled inuktitut when I say koyanak oktet. Thank you. Thanks also to Matt Robinson and the team at Outpost Magazine who co-produced that piece with us. To find out more about our trek and the Franklin mystery, you can pick up this month's copy of Outpost Magazine. Here it is. You can get to their website by visiting our website at cbc.ca slash Sunday. In case you missed it on the big screen behind him. Oh, I didn't even see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Stay with us. The story is next. Oh.